I'm Corey Sanders and welcome to the second episode of Dinner by Eight. Dinner by Eight is interested in the cook and their cooking. We research contestants online and they can also be nominated at our website dinnerby8.com. Then we arrange to show up at their house and we ask them to cook us a full meal by eight o'clock. The show is a competition. At the end of the season, we'll pick the top cooks and we'll put them together for a special competition and we will award a grand prize. Today we're in Carefree, Arizona to see Sydney Moore. Sydney was nominated by one of the viewers from the Todd Chase Show. Since the age of five, Sydney has wanted to have her own restaurant. She's taken culinary classes, but she has not achieved the rank of chef. She's cooked with a lot of top chefs here in the valley and she's very on top of her game. And the best thing about her is she's 13 years old. Great things have happened since we filmed the first show with Todd Chase. Number one, Chef Brent Mankey has agreed to be the show's executive chef. As always, he will prepare the menu for the show. And the menu for Sydney Moore is gazpacho, tortilla espanol, gambas al aljillo, Spanish meatballs, pan con tomate, paella valenciana, and flan. Good morning, it's Saturday, the morning before the Sydney Moore shoot. We're here at Whole Foods in North Scottsdale to shop for Sydney. Chef, are you as excited about Sydney as I am? I think Sydney is gonna be a knockout and I can't wait to see what she can do. Let's go inside and get some food. Let's get it done. What are we doing here, Chef? All right, so we're getting the ingredients together for the paella. So right now we're doing the seafood. So she's gonna do a mixed paella. She needs to be able to make sure that she's got what she needs, she has to cook them right, but here we are getting it all put together. It's olive oil. So this is where it makes a difference in Spanish cooking. It's different from the French, it's different from the Italian. It's definitely a lot more mellow, low acid, not a lot of herbaceousness, but for cooking, and especially traditional Spanish cooking, this way that you want to go. All right, and again, another one of those key ingredients, chorizo. So if we're trying to be able to make a paella, you want to have that flavor, that color that you get out of traditional paella, got to have chorizo. So here we go. Well, I think the drum mats are going to work out a little bit better than doing like those whole pieces. They don't take quite as much cooking time. They're going to present beautifully inside the paella pan. So I think Sydney so appreciate this. For Sydney's uh, table, we also picked up a little bit of manchego cheese. So coming from Spain, cow's milk, aged for six months, kind of a semi-firm cheese, but it brings a lot of flavor and I want to see if she can do something with this. Uh, bread. So I think I know exactly what to be able to go for for the meal. The beautiful organic ciabatta. This one's actually a little bit of a tighter grain than the other one that they've got, so it's gonna actually slice really nicely and give us something good to be able to do like that pen cristal tomates with. That'll work. Okay, Sydney, looks like we got all your shopping done. Everything you're gonna need to be able to prepare this meal is right here for you. Looking forward to seeing you on Sunday night, dinner by eight. Sydney has seven hours to complete this task. So let's go meet the aspiring chef. So meet Sydney Moore, 13 years old. Sydney, are you ready? Yes. Okay, we've got the challenge for you in the envelope. Okay? Okay. Here it is. Let's take a look and see what Chef came up with. I don't even know what half this is. I'll explain what these are. A gazpacho is a traditional, basically it's a raw Spanish soup. And so the basic ingredients we have right here between peppers, onions, tomatoes, uh, sherry vinegar, you know, essentially, you know, water, almonds, parsley, whatever you want to be able to put in there. But it's a raw soup, but it's about mixing and balancing those flavors on the palate. After that, you've got a tortilla espanol, which is a traditional, basically it's a potato omelet, but it's made like in a single, kind of like a nonstick skillet, but you have to be able to fry the potatoes and the onions because it caramelizes them because you want to get that nice sweetness inside of it. And then you use that heat out of those fried potatoes and onions to actually begin the cooking process on the eggs. After that, gamasal ajillo, essentially it's, it's shrimp and garlic. Spanish meatballs, imagine meatballs, give them a Spanish twist, which is tomatoes, peppers, onion, garlic, some smoked paprika, some of that spice that's in there, make the meatballs so that, again, we've got your pork, nice, tender meatball. Like, and like you make a meatball. I know you know how to make a meatball, right? Yeah. Okay, I know you got that. A paella though, a paella is really, you're talking about a presentation. So, but it's, there's so many different recipes and so many ways to go about it. All your proteins that you have out here in front of you from your rabbit to octopus, to squid, clams, mussels. I mean, anything here you want to be able to use, you can use or not use. Okay. It's up to you to be able to take it, make it your own. And flan, basically it's almost like a classic French creme caramel. You can know how to make a custard, right? Yeah. Well, then you can do this. I know you can do this. Okay. So you're going to be great. 
This is gonna be fun. <laughs> Sydney, remember what you said to me the first day we met? You said, I love to take recipes and make them better. Yep. And I love that. So what we're going to do is we're going to give you some time to look online. You use your iPad for um, most of your research, correct? Yeah. Use your iPad, take some time, go outside, sit in a corner, look at some of these different recipes, uh, print some things off if you need to, and then when you're ready, we want to bring you back, and when you think you have it, we're going to come back on camera, and we'll take it from there. Okay. Can you do that? Yes. I, I know you can. Chef has confidence in you. She's amazing. I promise you. This is going to be a great show. We're really looking forward to seeing what you can do with these ingredients. Okay? Okay. Be confident. It's good. All right. We're going to have a lot of fun today, I promise. We'll be back, right. folks. Thank you. So, Sydney, it's the moment of inspiration. Tell me, are you ready to go? I'm ready. Well, tell us what you're going to do. I'm going to start with the flan, because that seems to take the most amount of time. Then I'm probably going to do the meatballs to get those out of the way, because I know how to do that. And they can just sit on low heat so they stay warm. And then I'm probably going to move on to um, the, uh, the other things and try to see which one's going to take a lot of time because I think it's all about time and I think I can do the flavors. So I think I am ready to do it. You just kind of have to jump in, don't you? Yeah. Chef, what do you think? You know, I think it's just about going, but I think that's the right plan. I like your idea about going with the flan first because you have to get it cool and set and then out of that ramekin. Okay? So right. let's get to it. All right. So I'm going to warm the milk and the cream up and then I'm going to whisk it very quickly into the eggs and sugar. So why don't we do this? I'm going to give you an assist. You want to start right. whisking away? No. Okay. So you start whisking your yolks and your sugar. Now, just a little bit at a time, you're going to find it starting to loosen up, all right? All right. Okay. Just give it a swirl. And probably turn it Dip it in. Like that much? A little bit more. Perfect. Just like that. You know what? If you want to be able to swirl it around just a little bit so it properly coats, you know, the bottom of that. So it's a cup in each? A cup in each. Yeah. Great. Yep. Water bath. Yeah, I was saying, be careful. I know it. Especially without water, it makes it awkward. Yes, this is probably the there heaviest thing. Oops. It's okay. It's just water. How long do they need to cook for? Okay, well now you got a 300 degree oven. You know, you're going to probably put that in there for about uh, 30 minutes and just let it kind of do its thing. Okay? I'm going to set a timer because I'm going to forget. <laughs> Always set a timer. Now moving feels, on to meatballs. Feels good to finish something. Exactly. Exactly. How many eggs should I do? This is. You know, pork. go ahead and just start with two and see how moist they're going to be. If you need more eggs because you still have to add your breadcrumbs, you can always add more egg, but it's kind of hard to take them out. You got breadcrumbs. Okay. I put, put salt and crumbs. pepper. Salt put, pepper. I put the paprika in there. Okay. I think I think we have made the mixture of meatballs. Well, get in there with your hands. <laughs> Look at that. Those came together really nicely. Do you think that's going to be about the consistency you're looking for? Why don't you try one and find out? Yeah. I'm going to give you a little bit of a secret. That octopus takes three hours. It takes three hours? Three hours. But you, don't, you know what? I think you're done. Let's go ahead and try your meatball out and see how it tastes. Now, I do have another little lesson here for you. And this is going to be with your octopus. So, if I know you said you never worked for this before, or worked with this ingredient before, so I wanted to let you know how we're going to do this. Underneath, on the other hand, there's going to be a beak. A beak. If you ever wanted to know how they eat, that's it right there. You want to do it? Yes, I want to try to take the okay, beak out. Go ahead. All right. Get the beak out, and then go ahead and put it over there into the, uh, into the water. Just take a little knife and expand out that hole. All right. It feels so weird. <laughs> I know, the texture is just awesome. They can squeeze through the most unimaginably small openings. 
There you go. What the heck is that? Yeah, I know. Just pull the whole thing out. What is that? It's, it's its mouth. I mean, look how cool that is. So cool. <laughs> Good job, Sid. Thank you. You're welcome. Gotta get a pin and we're gonna form those. Feel a little better? Yes. Excellent. Now that the octopus is conquered, <laughs> I feel good now. I feel really good about the octopus now. Now I don't have to worry about it. Sydney, how are you? I am fantastic. Well, it looks great. The meatballs were just delicious. So you have set up a lifeline call with your friend Bo McMillan. Yes, I have. So Bo's quite a famous chef. Tell me how you got to be friends with Bo. Actually, my, my dad met him at a dinner he went to. Then he sent me a video telling me to keep loving cooking and keep chasing after it. And I sent a video back because I saw him beat Bobby Flay on Iron Chef. Hi, Bo. Sid, how are you, sweetie? Doing good? I'm doing good. I just got some ingredients that I have like no idea what to do with. I got a lot of seafood. I have no idea what to do with the octopus I have. It's cooking right now, so I have like three hours, but I don't know what to do with it. Octopus is one of my favorite things on the planet, and the good thing about octopus is it's delicious on its own. Um, so how are you cooking it? Uh, it's boiling in some water right now. Boil it, get it tender. Literally, one of my favorite things to do with octopus is sim simply grill it. You want to establish good char marks and then get that nice char flavor that Americans really, truly love. Okay, it's a good amount of options. I think I can work with that. How's everything else going? Yeah, I'm loving it. It's really different being on camera. I made a flan, which was totally new. It's in the oven still, and nice. I'm making meatballs right now. I love it. Well, take full advantage of it, Sid. Listen, let me tell you something. I, I've known you for a couple of years now, and we've gotten the opportunity to cook together in the kitchen before. And I'm going to tell you, a girl your age knew more about food and knows more about food and cooking than I did at age 24, so stand up, be proud of yourself. Those cameras are there to help you shine. Thanks, Bo, I needed that. You got it, kid, you got it. It's great talking to you. I think I'll wait for the land to be done and then maybe cook those and put them in the fridge because then when I make the sauce, then they'll warm up in the sauce and then they'll be ready to go. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. If that's your plan, go All for right. it. That's okay. Meatballs are done. Lynn is still cooking. I think I'm gonna do like a spot show next. First though, I think I am gonna throw some of these meats in the smoker. Really? Yes. Wow, nice. Yes. All right, well there we go. There's the Sydney's twist right there that we're looking for. All right, I think we're gonna throw the chicken in the smoker, the rabbit in the smoker, these guys in the smoker. Really? Yes. Okay. But I'm gonna have to cut them up first. so beautiful. <laughs> this is very heavy. Ah, uh, Sydney, nicely done. Look at those. Oh, you're on really good track. Your timing is on, really, you're, right now you're on point. But again, just keep remembering, you don't want to lose track of that time. Don't, no. don't slow down, don't stop. Just keep plugging through things, just task after task after task, and you're going to be just fine. They're gonna need longer. They are not ready yet. They are good. That olive oil helped to give it a little bit of richness. I think it was needing because otherwise it would have just been too straight vegetable, too acidic, what have you. The sugar helped to bring a little bit of that balance in there, which I think is brilliant. You brought up the salt, which it needed, and yeah, I mean you've got everything going there on a gazpacho. 
get in the fridge. Let those ingredients kind of come together for a while. Right. I mean, you still got, all right, you now have two hours and 20 minutes to get everything out. So it's time to boogie. All right. All right. Rock and roll. Next, I'm gonna make the tortilla espanol. Give you a little bit of a brief explanation about how this works. By caramelizing the onions and caramelizing the potatoes, it brings out its natural sweetness. There's one thing I could say about the Spanish, is they definitely have a bit of a sweet tooth. All right. So we're gonna need a lot of olive oil. A lot of olive oil. Now I'm gonna start frying my onions and potatoes. Two hours. Yeah, two hours. Two hours. Doing good. I'm You're right. Good. I'm right where I need to be. You're, you're right where you need to be. All right. You're still you're still on time. Say so how we're looking. Looking good. We just cut some trees up, and we are keeping an eye on potatoes. Okay. So I'm just trying to prep as much as I can so that after I finish this, we can move on to the paella, then move on to the bread, and just keep moving. Just let's check out the octopus and see how it's doing. Whoa, it's like purple. Perfect. So they're done. They're done. Whoa, okay. look at this. The head fell off. <laughs> so how are you feeling? Still good? I'm doing great. This okay. is awesome. So it's 610 right now. And I still gotta do the shrimp, so that'll take 10 minutes, so that'll be like later. Just like that. Okay. All right. And that's your pan con tomate top. And you're gonna wanna put that into a bowl, and you're wanna hit that with a little bit of, again, olive oil, some sea salt. Well, you got that sea salt over there for you as well. A um, little bit of pepper, and that's pretty much it. The cool thing about olive oil is that you, know, you can continue to use this again and again and again. Like you don't want to lose that. Like you've got all that flavor that it's got put in there, especially you know with all those those onions. I mean that's really really nice. So you're gonna want to have that. Okay, now I'm gonna hit it with some salt and pepper. Then I'm going to add it to my eggs. Yeah. So your tortilla is kind of finishing doing its thing inside. It's got about another 10 minutes to be able to kind of rest and do its thing. Probably need to start getting on to your pan con tomate. Start getting yeah. that sliced. You can brush with that olive oil and then get ready to be able to throw that into the oven. All right. Now you kind of whoop. That feels weird. All right, there okay. we go. Here you are. Right. So, Sid, why don't you tell me what you got going on here? I'm starting the pan con tomate. I'm Getting my bread ready here, and I'm gonna put some olive oil on it and start getting my tomato, my garlic, and everything on it. Fantastic, all right, all right. looking forward to trying that. Uh, now I just finished using the leftover olive oil from the potatoes and onions, and now I'm going to season them with salt and pepper. Now time to get them into the oven and get them toasted. Now I'm going to use the leftover olive oil again, and I'm going to fry out these veggies for the meatballs. So far I've done the flan, and that's setting, and I've done the gazpacho, which is chilling in the refrigerator. And I have finished my meatballs, and I'm currently working on the sauce for them. And I have finished boiling my octopus and I've smoked the rabbit and the chicken. So what do we got here now? All right, now I've finished toasting the bread for the hand corn tomate, and right. I just gotta get the tomatoes and garlic on there. Those so. look fantastic. Yeah. Are going over here with your sauce? Um, I've got some bell peppers and onions, and I just added some crushed tomatoes, and I'm gonna add some salt, pepper, and smoked paprika here in a minute. All right, there's that Spanish flavor coming in there with that smoked paprika. Are okay. right. looking forward to that. Now I'm gonna finish up the tortilla espanol. I'm gonna put this oil in here and get it hot, and then I'm gonna add um, our mixture of potatoes, onions, and egg, and then we're just gonna fry that and get that done. 
You feel confident or no? I'm feeling confident. All right, I'm going to step back out of frame. This is a big moment right here. One. Two. Okay, now slide it back into the pan. Okay, and now, now all you have to do is put it back in the stove top and finish cooking on the bottom. Go for the rice. All right, and the rice. And the rice. All of the rice. All the rice. Sydney, I want you to tell me, what is it we got going on in the pan right now? Well, right now I just added the rice and the calamari. Okay. Before that, I added the crushed tomatoes and some saffron, some smoked paprika, salt and pepper. And before that, I started with the veggies and the chorizo. Dynamite. Doing? All right, right now I'm gonna add my stock. Corey! What? You threw out my tomatoes for the tomate. What do you mean? The tomatoes that were crushed and grated. You threw them out. I and did? They were, yes, and they were for the tomate. What do you mean? How did I throw them out? You were the one who cleaned them up. Oh my gosh, you mean, what? Oh, chef! Probably have to use the Oh, crushed. you're gonna lose the competition now. No, I'm not! <laughs> It's yeah. not happening. Did you hear what happened? What happened? The, well, he threw out my tomatoes for the tomate. <laughs> what, for the panko and tomatoes? You threw out our tomatoes? I don't know. What, you thought that was garbage? Oh, I dude. don't know. I Honestly, I don't have no recollection of doing this. All right, um, okay. Use... You can do this. Think. What are you going to do to be able to fix it? You can use what you got on hand. I, I Granted, I know it wasn't your fault, but what are you going to do? Well, I don't have any more tomatoes, so we're going crushed tomatoes. What's this? Crushed tomatoes. Oh, you've got crushed tomatoes on the counter still? <laughs> Don't throw them away. Oh, okay. okay. You better <laughs> fix doctor, that. Doctor them up. Make uh, it happen. All that flavor, everything you got going on, all that flavor is going to pop into that chicken and into that pie. I hope so. It's got to taste good. So, now the time crunch is on. I see you got your pan con tomatoes out of there. You got your meatballs are done. I can see that you've got your tortilla espanolas done. Your pie, your pie is doing amazing out there. But now you got to get your seafood on there. That's like your next, your next step with that. And you still got to do your shrimp. So time crunch is on. Down a little bit. the clams, the lemon, we got the smoked octopus, and we are just all done now with our paella. See, that's looking awesome, seriously. Good job. Thank you. Wow, look at that. Here we go. Sydney, congratulations. You made dinner by eight. You were definitely up to the task. I just, you could, let's give her a round of applause again. So tell us, what have you prepared for us? Well, I've got this amazing paella with some smoked octopus and a lot of other seafood and some smoked rabbit and chicken. I've got some Spanish meatballs with a marinara sauce. I've got the uh, pan con tomate right there with okay. all nice and seasoned. And I've got the gazpacho right here. Okay. I've got my gambas al ajillo. Al ajillo, yes. <laughs> and <laughs> Um, I've got my tortilla espanol and my flan. Last but not least, the flan. Well, Sydney, it's been just a pleasure, and I really want to thank you for being on the show. Good job and congratulations, and just best of luck in all your endeavors. You are such a wonderful young lady, and there's just nothing but the top for you. All right, thank you so much. It was so much fun. Good job. Whoa, I can't well, believe I did it. We like your food, we like your style, we show up at your house. We've got a little request of you, we hope you'll hear us out. You take from us, so use your own and cook us what we ask. It might not be a specialty, but we know you're up to the task. It's dinner by eight.
So Sydney, it's about 8.30, the calm after the storm. Tell me, how was the experience for you? When I first walked out and looked at those ingredients, I was so terrified because I have never even seen half of those things, let alone worked with them. It definitely looked like deer in headlines. I was like, uh oh. I was like, what, what have I done? I was like, ah. Oh. Yeah, first few hours, I was like, that was you know, like seven things to do. I was like, this is more than I've ever done, ever. The face, you got beat down, you got Dude, put got, in the like, hospital, you got to the bottom of the you ocean. Got, you did, you got brought down to the bottom of the ocean and you just really swam yourself and kicked yourself back up. You know, that's a great metaphor. It's going to be good from a dramatic sense. Yeah, because the, because the, you know, threw the, away my tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> there is that. Man, it's just eight hours in the kitchen, 30 minutes to eat it. That was so much work. <laughs> Hmm. Well, that's quite delicious. It tastes like a creme brulee. <laughs> <laughs> well done. And the caramel on top, oh, that's just fantastic. Couldn't be better. Oh, I love it. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs>